Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Clash of the Arden, and it is by Ellen Clapp. It is a two-player tactical skirmish game in which you're playing head-to-head -head and trying to uh, gather three victory points on a board. The game is played entirely in the box and it uses wooden pieces in which you're going to be placing down tanks, soldiers, and generals, as well as some other units and some even special units if you're playing with the more advanced version of the game. It plays similar to games like checkers and chess in a way, but with its own unique type of strategy. The game comes with the box and of course all the pieces that you're going to be placing in the box for your side and your opponents and be moving your pieces across. The larger pieces will defeat other pieces and some of the smaller pieces will defeat the largest pieces. If you can get your units all the way across the field, that's a point. If you can do that three times, you win. But remember, you lock points in and you're also locking your characters in on the points that they accomplish. So you have to be careful as how you use them. Anyway, I know that sounds kind of confusing, but we'll go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what you get in the game and then I'll show you how to play and we'll come up and we'll talk about what I think about the game Clash. So here we have the game Clash of the Arden and everything included. And as you can see, it is a wooden box. It's going to have a front and a bottom and you'll be utilizing your uh, right and left hand side pieces. There are the gray guys here, the green guys here, and these are the special units which will be red in which players can choose to select one of them at the beginning of the game if they choose to or simply play the base game where they just use their own personal units. It comes with of course this rule book here which reminds me of a German tank guide. I'll actually go ahead and show you this I'll open up in a second here. But these here are where you're going to be placing your units on one side side or on the other side and you're trying to get your units all the way across the board destroying your opponent's units and getting to the edge and when you do that you're going to get a point and that will be your controlled area if you can do that three times you can get three of your units to three of the sides here that's all you need to do in order to win the game uh, but that is easier said than done realistically because there's a lot of stuff that goes into the game uh, The pieces you're gonna get in the game are your tanks You're gonna get your mines which can defeat tanks You're gonna get your soldiers which can defeat mines but lose to tanks And you're going to get different ranks of soldiers the better ranking soldiers will beat the lower ranking soldiers And if two units of the same type compete against each other, they will both simply defeat each other These are unique types of uh, weaponry whether it be like these little ballistas, these larger type tanks, and uh, these basically these like general type guys here. They have your own unique rules in the rule book. But otherwise, they're just two different types of forces, but they function the same way. This is the rule book for Clash, and it is, literally has like images, depictions of what you would normally see in a tank guide, and it tells you how to play the game, along with some really cool, unique <laughs> style, stylization of artwork. It tells you how you're going to be moving your units and whatnot. And it just goes through it. It's really, really cool, really interesting. I really enjoy this. Like, it's just before my review. Like, I just really enjoy the way they did this specific booklet. I think he really went out of his way to make sure that this looked very, very similar to what you would see back then as far as a tank guide would go. <laughs> Some really cool imagery. Anyway, uh, that is pretty much what you get in the game. Uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you down below how to play it and um, hopefully how to win. So here we have Clash of the Arden, and as you can see, we are about ready to begin the game. It's only two players. It's a head-to-head -head combat game. Some might call it an abstract game, which would probably be fair to say. Uh, and we're simply going to have four points, and we're going to start with this color over here. Another thing to note, too, is if you're playing with these guys, which we won't be. I want you guys to have a little special... Uh, uh, go ahead and look at the Kickstarter campaign to see what they all do, but you just know that these are like generals are stronger than other type units of its sort. These guys are able to shoot in different ways. These things can fire to the left, and these guys here are very, very special. They're the spies. They're really cool. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and start. Four actions per turn, and actions are going to be either A, to drop down a piece and put it on the far left-hand side, uh, B, you could choose to go ahead and if you have two pieces, move a piece from the back of a line up front. And then C, you can go ahead and return a front piece back to your uh, area over here. Now to place is going to be one action, so that would be two. And to move forward is two actions, which would basically end my turn there if I chose to do that. Uh, the other thing you can do in the game is if you're blocked 
by a unit that chose not to attack you, you would have to, and you wanted to return this, you'd have to spend three actions to do so. So it's kind of at your own peril if you want to do that. So we'll go ahead and start by placing one, two, and then we'll just go ahead and place one of these guys here, three, and then four. So that would be his turn completely. Then we go to the next player's turn, which would be over here. And he's going to have to deliberate how he wants to deal with what has been placed here. Remember, the, the tanks are going to be able to beat the uh, military men, but the mines will beat tanks. So maybe he wants to put a tank back here because that can defeat all of these, even though these will trade. Maybe he wants to put a mine like this. And uh, then he go ahead and put maybe another tank. See, I hope that hopefully will work. That's one, two, three, and one more action. Let's go with something like this. Put this guy over here. And he'll just keep going back and forth. Players are going to keep playing these things down. Hmm, I'll show you what happens. We'll go ahead and move this guy up. So we've moved this guy up. That's two actions to do so. And now we can choose to, if we want, attack. And we will. When we attack, they're going to uh, be like. So a tank versus a tank. So they're actually going to both return. Attacking is free, provided you can do so. So that was two actions to simply place one down. And luckily for him, he can go ahead and uh, come back here to the back of the line, which is going to be a total of three actions with one more action left. Maybe we'll go with something like uh, uh, this guy here, I believe. And now it's the next player's turn. Next player is going to go ahead and let's go ahead and put one of these guys here. And one of these guys here. And then finally we'll move this one up. Now remember, you have to continue to form a line. So if for some reason this was over here and you didn't have a guy to place that was this length, like like, you, like this right here, you could not place this here. There's only one line in each of the different rows. So make sure that when you choose to move forward, it's with a pretty strong and sturdy army. I think he has one more action left. So we'll take this guy, a really strong guy, and we'll place him over here. Back to this player's turn here. He's going to go ahead and move this forward here. Now remember, if he do, if he does that, he's going to be blocked by this mine. He can't put. He has to put a tank down here, so we can go two, and then three, and then place one of these here. That's four, and then these will blow up because he's choosing to attack them. Pretty solid, right? Okay, this goes to the next player's turn. This next player is in kind of a little bit of trouble here, so maybe he wants to put two mines down. That's two. And then this will glow up the, the tank. Actually, this will actually even stay there. And uh, let's see here. Three. This will destroy this guy here. And four. This will knock this guy out because he's stronger. And that's the idea of the game. Eventually, one side is going to lose, most likely. And the other side is going to end up getting to the end. And if that happens, they're going to control one of the points here. If you control three points, you win the game. Another thing to note is once your side controls a lane, these units that are here that are yours are locked. These can never come back. You must leave them there. So be aware of, uh, be very wary of what units you want to use and what spaces and how many you want to use in order to kind of control certain areas. Because if you use too many, so for instance, if I did something like this with even maybe my best units, like maybe like this guy over here, uh, that is a lot of units to use for just one specific lane. So you might be in some deep duty if you do that. So hopefully, if you're lucky, maybe you can win a lane with just like these three guys here. And if you're smart about it, you might be able to get up there by just simply moving. But it's going to be at a certain cost. So remember that. And if you get kind of stuck, you're going to actually have to return units back. So, you know, in this case, if you were like this, you're kind of in trouble there. So you'll actually have to return units. So you're going to have to be very careful when and how you play the game. This is actually a pretty tactical, pretty strategic game as to where and when you want to play certain things and how. And then, of course, utilizing these units. The one thing I misspoke on is you get one unit. You technically will get... Uh, one of each type, but you can only have one on the board at a specific given time. And if you, for some reason, lock that specific unit in, so for instance, if this unit was locked in this space here, you're not going to be able to put any more red units on the board. That has been locked, so be very careful of that. But that's the basic idea of the game Clash. Let's go ahead and come up and I'll discuss the game a little more in further detail, and I'll tell you what I think about it. All right, so some caveats for Clash. And the first thing is when you defeat something in battle, so you can choose to battle or not, because if you choose not to battle, they have to take it off for three, three points, which is 
quite irritating. But when you choose to battle, if you're battling, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but if you're battling the same type of unit in a row, so for instance, I'm green and I have this mine here, and I defeat this tank, any tank next to it down the line will also get defeated. So like units being next to each other can be very debilitating. Additionally, like I said before, if you control an entire area here, so you wouldn't have this guy, you have a green one here, but if you have this entire area here controlled, these pieces are all going to lock. And in addition, you cannot use them anymore, but you've got one of three points. And when you use these special units, you can only use one at a time in the board area. And if it locks along with a winning area, that means you're no longer going to be able to use those special units. So be very careful when and how you choose to utilize them. But otherwise, those are pretty much the main caveats for the game. Clash is a tactical strategy game, which may be considered to be an abstract game, similar to games like Checkers and Chess. It definitely has a lot of thought-provoking decisions in it. You'll be playing back and forth, utilizing your actions as best as possible, making sure to control a specific lane without putting too many pieces there, because if you place too many pieces in that specific lane, you're then going to meet with a dilemma of having less pieces left over at the next lane and eventually you may have not enough pieces to win the game so be very careful when selecting which pieces to place where utilizing those advanced pieces as you continue to play the game are definitely going to help and they all do some unique different um, strategy aspects you're going to be using them as tools and hopefully you're going to be giving them back so allowing them to die can actually be very good this specific character called the spy is very very effective but if it gets locked you're in trouble because you no longer have access to the specific pieces the game is a deep tactical strategy game this is not going to be a gateway game this is not a game that you're going to be playing on a family game night you're going to be sitting down a head-to-head -head war game simulator you're going to be clashing with your opponent in each lane tactical strategy tips could be allowing your opponent to get a lane provided they place enough pieces there to then re reduce the amount of forces they have additionally if you're fighting for a lane in another lane sometimes it's going to be beneficial to take pieces off of a lane and specifically place them in other pieces uh, other pieces in other lanes not only that but placing too many pieces of the same type can be very detrimental to you but also can help you depending on what you're trying to do manipulating your opponent to place pieces down in lanes you don't actually want to successfully capture can be of use to you because now they're going to spend actions to pull back don't forget your soldiers their ranks matter higher rank soldiers are better and will defeat lower rank soldiers and that is very beneficial as well the game itself comes with this beautiful rule book, which is really, really cool. It reminds me of a tank manual and has a bunch of different illustrations in it and tells you how to play the game as well as it has the really cool different types of uh, units on the back here somewhere, the special units. I don't know where they are, but it explains all of those in detail as well. The game is a wooden box, which is going to be, as you can see, it's got the laser etching. This is the way to get the game. If it has a basic board, I would strongly suggest this one over the basic board just because it's so cool. There are some minor little problems with some of the pieces. They're just, some of them were etched in certain ways and whatnot, but overall it's really high quality and very nice. I expect that the prototype here is going to be slightly enhanced when the game fully comes out. So I wouldn't knock it off too many points in that aspect. The game is longer than I actually anticipated. I thought it was gonna be a back and forth game that would end rather quickly, like most of the games I get that seem like this, but this one in fact goes into a lot of depth and detail. Where do I want to move? How do I want to place these certain things? In which areas do I want to place these specific soldiers? Do I want to let him have this lane or do I want to take this lane? But I need to do this and this and this. And thinking ahead of time, so four or five a million moves ahead of time is going to greatly benefit you in this game. You're going to progressively get better and better learning how many units to place in what lanes and it's going to significantly improve your gameplay as you lose. And in fact, I lost many, many times while playing this game because I'm not very good at these type of games, but I enjoyed myself and I got better each time. I lost really badly, badly, and bad. So if I keep playing, it's most likely I'm going to slowly start to get better and hopefully be able to beat Grant, my cameraman, at some point in time. Overall, the game is a solid little tactical war game. So there's a lot more game in here than you would probably imagine just based on the pieces. And I think for you guys that like this type of game, you're going to really dig it. For me, this is a game I'm going to bring out on very specific occasions against certain people. I have a, a lifelong friend that comes over and likes to play these type of games. We'll be decking it out back and forth in this, and I'll probably lose as well. But it's not a game I'm going to just 
just jump out on game night, especially since it's a two-player tra tactical strategy game. Maybe if me and my wife get into a disagreement, we're going to hash it out with some clash. Anyway, if you guys are interested in taking a look at the game, go ahead and check down below. The game is currently on Kickstarter, a solid strategy tactical abstract war game with that German rulebook, the tank rulebook thing. Super cool. Overall, it was fun. Thank you so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like this video, comment, subscribe, and then hit that little notification bell thingy if you want to see more reviews from us. We do Kickstarter games, we do games that are released, all, all sorts of games. If it's a game, we do it. Also, you can check out our unfilteredgamer.com website. We give away certain games like Santorini, which we're giving away right now. There's also a Kickstarter list to show you all the newest Kickstarter games, so you have to search for them yourself. So you can simply see our list and some other cool little odds and ends there. You can also check out our live stream every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST. We're giving away games live on stream. We're showing you guys how to paint. We're doing all the latest and greatest Kickstarter stuff. Just all the kinds of fun stuff. It's a great community people really seem to enjoy it and uh it helps with the patreon dollars all right guys that is pretty much what i got for you go ahead and check out the game clash of the arden i hope i said that right it was french so I, I, I assume i am i don't know i looked it up on the translator thing thank you guys for watching as always i look forward to two player battling it out with you next time